Hello and welcome back to day four of Real Estate Live UK and our second week of virtual events brought to you by White Label, our partners and sponsors. Um, we've got a really good session this afternoon for you brought to you by um, Crawley Borough Council and their partners um, talking about uh, why you should invest in Crawley and why Crawley is set fair for investment. So um, I hope everyone's looking forward to the session. Um, before we get going, we're looking to encourage as much audience participation as possible. Um, we hope you're going to be putting lots of questions to our chair and our panellists during the next hour. Um, but to kickstart your engagement, we're going to launch a quick poll, which we've been doing at the beginning of each of our sessions this week. Um, and the poll is asking you, what is the most important factor in unlocking development and ensuring the continued strength of UK real estate? Um, so that poll is live now. There's a few answers and they're quite long. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to read through those. Um, we asked a similar question at the beginning of our polls, at the beginning of our webinars in June, and we'll be showing the results of this week and comparing them to last week, uh, last event uh, at the end of this week. So yeah, I'll give you a little bit of time to fill that in. Uh, it looks like transport infrastructure is coming up tops at the moment, but there's uh, a good range of votes for all the answers. So interesting to see uh, what you'll vote for and whether that's changing over the week based on the panels you've heard. Um, so as I said, if you could carry on interacting with us during this session using Zoom's Q&A feature, that would be great. Please put all your questions in there rather than in the chat. Um, but if you've got any comments you'd like to make or would like to introduce yourself, then that's what the chat's for. So um, that's all from me, and I'm going to hand over to Joe Gum, who's the director at White Label, to chair the panel, and I hope you all enjoy. Joe. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Um, and thank you to all our attendees who I can see are entering the room, and I hope you've all managed to vote. I'd like to give a warm welcome today to our panellists. I have Clem Smith, who's the Head of Economy and Planning at Crawley, Lynn Hayne, who's the Economic Regeneration Manager at Crawley, Adam Goffrey, Senior Partner at SHW, Steve Sawyer, Executive Director of Manor Royal Bid, and Graham Willis, Group CFO of Barrington James. Um, today's session is held in partnership with Invest Crawley, and we're going to be looking at the development opportunities available in the Crawley area. Um, I am particularly pleased to be chairing this one because I admit that I grew up just south of Crawley, and when I grew up, Crawley was the boom town. And I later went on to become a trainee journalist in Crawley, and it was still the boom town. Um, and I remember at the time it actually scored a negative unemployment. It was certainly the place where when I grew up, myself and all, all those of us who lived there aimed to work and to have our future careers um, because it had such potential for the future. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to our very first speaker, who is Clem, who's going to give us a nice presentation on the latest investment plans and the opportunities for development and investment in the town. Thank you very much, Joe. So this uh, presentation is entitled Crawley Set Fair for Investment. Um, it's going to be a snapshot. I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to pack in as much as I can in that short period. Firstly, Crawley, as the map shows, is superbly located and it's also dynamic and embraces change. It's a superb location because we're right next to the M23 motorway, very easy access to the M25. We're right on the doorstep of Gatwick Airport, International Gateway, and we're next to the London to Brighton main rail line. In terms of our population, we are growing. Um, we have 112,000 people, that's an 8% population growth in the last 10 years. Um, we have 2,000 new homes that have been built since 2015, and our local plan tells us we have 11,000 more homes needed. We are a dynamic economic hub. We've been growing strongly, 101,000 jobs. We've got the second highest job density outside central London. Um, the area is only 17.36 square miles in size, so 2% of the county economic area, but 26% of its output. And we have some major assets, not just the Gatwick Airport, but also Manorall Business District, largest business district in the southeast, over 600 businesses, 30,000 plus jobs. The town centre is a regional shopping centre with a major commercial office hub for professional services. Tilgate Park is a park, a, a fantastically beautiful park of regional significance of 2,000 plus acres part of the borough and also part of the borough, K2 Leisure Centre, a regional sports centre for Sussex, um, providing, for example, regional athletics uh, competition, a Olympic-sized swimming pool, and also a, a number of national indoor sports tournaments. And we have an amazing economic success story. Our economy between 2013 and 2018 grew by 23%. 
one of the fastest in the southeast, to the extent that the economy was worth just shy of £6 billion in 2018. Our job space over the same period grew by 13.5% to 101,000 jobs, and our employment rate has historically been very high, 82% pre-COVID. Our business base similarly grew, similarly grew uh, significantly by 23% over the five years of 2018, notably above the southeast average of 17%. And we have a highly productive economy. Our average economic product productivity per worker uh, rates at 45,000 per capita, which is the highest in the coastal capital subregion. But we have, um, it's fair to say, been faced with a major challenge in the cusp of the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and that stems around the contraction of the aviation industry. So that's um, illustrated by comparing the April figures for passenger volume for Gatwick, which was at 10,000 passengers in 2020, compared to 4 million passengers at the same time the previous year. So huge contraction. That's led to major Gatwick Airport and airline redundancies and a number, of, a significant number of other redundancies in retail, hospitality and leisure and supply chain linked to the aviation industry. But there is the development of an aviation recovery plan, which the government is going to be announcing very shortly. And Gatwick Airport is also preparing its own recovery plan as part of that process. We have seen as a result of um, that contraction, a sharp increase in the claimant count. So up to seven and a half percent in August compared to before COVID hit in. And we've seen a youth claimant count up now up to 13%. So young people being particularly affected. And these are above national average increases. Now the forecasts, as you probably are aware from the media, have been um, pretty challenging. 57% of the job, job space being potentially at risk, 60% of exporting jobs. Um, and Hatch Regeneris stating that Crawley may be the most exposed to job losses. Now it's important to emphasize these are forecasts. These are predictions. They may never come to pass. Um, the emphasis is on the conditional um, and predictions can often go awry. And one of the reasons why we think that's the case is because we are um, spearheading an in the investment of a um, billion pound plus counter recessionary program. The council is leading by example. We're investing 60 million pounds in a town hall site development scheme um, at the forefront of which we've got a new town hall, which is a nine storey development of which five stories um, comprise 78,000 square feet of brand new grade A commercial space to serve our professional services hub and hopefully attract more business into the town centre. We have embarked on the programme of developing a new town centre neighbourhood of 3,000 homes which is um, reinforced by our local plan which uh, I'll come on to in a moment and we are in the process of developing a new eastern gateway commercial quarter which is um, characterized by great state-of-the-art grade a modern commercial space to ensure a sustainable future for our professional services cluster we have secured 27 million pounds of investment in gigabit broadband infrastructure which is being rolled out over the next two years there's a large-scale investment in sustainable transport infrastructure taking place which i'll come on to and the Crawley Growth Programme is a public-private funding investment, which is investing in the improvement of public realm infrastructure in specifically in Crawley Town Centre and the Manor Royal Business District in order to improve the quality of both the living and the business environment and attract more commercial and residential investment. And certainly last but not least, we have just secured £25 million from the government to continue that investment through the Towns Fund. And this is helping Manor Royal to unlock significant state-of-the-art new business space. So 112,000 square metres, 11 hectares of new commercial space has been built out in the past five years in the Manor Royal Business District. A range of business space comprising uh, advanced manu manufacturing and facilities with R&D functions, um, new um, aircraft simulator uh, investment, new commercial grade A space, high quality new warehouse space, and new good quality small business space. And we have another six hectares of commercial space with planning permission, um, which is ready to be built out. That includes, for example, the Gatwick Park, which is the picture in the bottom right hand corner, which has over 10,000 square meters of uh, high quality grade A commercial office space, um, which is in the offing to be built out and seeking uh, new business tenants to come in and join that transformation of the Manor Royal Business District. 
In relation to the town centre neighbourhood, as I mentioned, we are building a vibrant new neighbourhood. Significant progress is already made. Um, over the last six years, the number of residential homes has increased from 214 to 831. There are a number of major residential developments active and on site. So 400, over 400 are currently being built out. And we have, we have in total 870 additional units with planning permission already. And as I say, the local plan uh, enables a supply of um, um, land, which would enable 3,000 homes. And there are a number of live opportunities for more schemes to come forward, including the county building site, which is the picture, the site in the bottom right hand corner there, um, which has, um, in terms of concept, um, brought forward proposals for a new 5,000 square metre commercial space development and uh, and around 240 new homes and Crawley College working with local planning authority is in the process of developing a new master plan purpose which is to upgrade enable upgrading of the FE campus to sustain that valuable skills um, function and skills capacity skills training capacity for Crawley but also to release land for commercial and residential space development to continue to build uh, the town centre's commercial and neighbourhood hubs. Moving on to sustainable transport infrastructure, um, the £150 million upgrade to Gatwick Railway Station, the picture of which is in the top right hand corner, is currently going ahead. Um, the, uh, the contractors are taking advantage of the fact that there's uh, far fewer passengers at the moment and that's progressing well. Um, there is outline planning permission for a new railway station complex at Crawley that's going to reserve matters along with 300 plus homes um, before the end of the year and that's a £70 million investment. We have unlocked public funds to upgrade the quality of the public realm and pedestrian and cyclist connectivity into Three Bridges Station, recognising its key function, linking Crawley into the London to Brighton main line. And we, are, we have secured resources to enable investment in a new state-of-the-art bus station and significant sustainable transport infrastructure to link into that. And ourselves and the County Council, West Sussex, have recently signed an agreement whereby we are contracting um, a contractor to come in to roll out um, EV charging infrastructure across Crawley. Um, and there's more dynamism to come. Um, Crawley Towns Fund, as I've mentioned, we're one of 101 towns to receive up to 25 million pounds of investment. That investment plan 2021-26 is with the government and awaiting government feedback. Some highlights of what that comprises includes money towards that new state-of-the-art bus station, a construction skills hub, which is going to be um, expanding the workforce capacity in terms of skills to support our continuing regeneration. And there will be a specialism in green construction skills now, um, in recognition of the fact we need to be future-proofing the workforce so that we can continue that major transition. The council has signed up to the Global Climate Change Declaration, uh, committing the authority to leading the process of zero achieving zero, zero net carbon and obviously green construction skills are a key part of that and also a part of that programme of homes green retrofitting. We're going to be investing uh, millions of pounds in enabling green retrofitting process of existing homes and we have been able working with the local enterprise partnership to unlock eight and a half million pounds of additional funding over and above the 25 million pounds to enable development of an innovation centre which will comprise digital technology small businesses and micro enterprises which will be serving the advanced manufacturing cluster in Manor Royal to support products and service development and, and last but not least digital connectivity um, the investment in the gigabit infrastructure is going to be making great strides in enhancing and strengthening digital connectivity for both businesses and residents within Crawley to ensure that Crawley can stay um, ahead of the game um, in terms of that capability. And that's obviously a key part of our ability to attract ongoing business investment into the area. So that is my presentation. I'd be very happy to take questions in due course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Clem. That was really interesting to learn more about Crawley. Um, and and what's happening there and I'm afraid it has somewhat reinforced my prejudices as a West Sussex girl that Crawley is definitely the place to be. I had noticed the 2% of area and 26% of the economic output so clearly what we all thought as kids was 100% accurate. Um, you're also still well ahead of the game on the grounds I have realised this is probably the first panel I have chaired um, for some time where everybody has got the hang of the technology perfectly and I have a complete matching set of backgrounds so thank you very much. On that note, I'd like to move on to um, Steve, who's going to tell us a little bit about Manor Royal. 
Steve, just to start with, because not everybody on this will know Manor Royal and what it is and what it means, could you tell us a little bit about it and what it does and what are some of the recent investments and some of its future plans? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, delighted to, to cover that off. Um, so for those who don't know uh, Manor Royal, uh, probably since Crawley's very, very beginning as a new town back in 1947, um, Manor Royal was designed to be the mainstay of the borough's um, skilled employment offer, really. And um, even today, that very much remains the case, even though now it's complemented by Gavick Airport to the north, of course, and uh, an ever-improving town centre offer, five minutes to the south in the town, in the town centre. But of course, Joe, since those um, very early days, uh, Manor Royal's changed such a lot. Um, and it's become one of the, uh, the UK's, as Clem was saying, one of the UK's largest and hugely diverse mixed-use uh, business parks. Um, and a you know, few places compared to Manor Royal, it's, it's 540 acres. That's providing over 9 million square feet of commercial space, divided up in all sorts of different buildings, offices, and industrial space, and so on. Um, over 600 companies have made Manor Royal their home, providing employment for you know, 30,000 people, which unbelievably is more people than are directly employed uh, by the airport. And, you know, a few people uh, appreciate that fact. So you've got some, some two really major drivers for the economy in Crawley um, at play in, in Manor Royal and in, in the airport. And, and uh, the third one obviously being in the town centre. Uh, you know, but you think about how big that is. You know, in a, in a way, uh, Manor Royal is, is, is like a town of business in its own right, such is its size and its, and its scale. And, and indeed, you know, as, as Clem was saying there, Manor Royal by itself, a square mile, it boasts more in terms of output per head than many of the towns in total nearby. That's, that's pretty amazing for uh, all, all those businesses rammed into that little square mile there. Um, but, you know, just moving on very quickly to answer that second part of your question, Joe, um, what will you expect if you came to Manor Royal? So if you haven't been to Manor Royal, you really want to come and check it out, yeah? Because it's, it's well worth a look. And um, in terms of business activity, there's everything on there from world-leading designers and, and manufacturers of life-saving medical devices to professional services, logistics, of course, as you'd expect, but right the way through to pilot training, which is pretty big on Manuel, and even people making pies, Joe. So if you want to fly a plane and eat a pie, you get down to Manor Royal, that's the place to do both of those things. And given the diversity of businesses, as you'd expect, and Admiral, Admiral picked this up when he talked about this, um, massive diversity of uh, property offer there, from small workshops to large industrial units to HQ office buildings as well. And, um, you know, it's also home to the UK's largest industrial bid, run by businesses themselves, and uh, providing you know, a huge range of additional services and continually driving improvement in Manuel alongside its key partners like Crawley Borough Council to make Manuel an exciting place to come and, and, and to do business. So you know, when you move to Manuel, uh, what you can expect is not just to move into a place with a nice building, and, but, but be an unconnected business. You know, the reality is you become part of a community in Manuel, a community of people, and um, you don't get that, and you won't get that from a lot of places. And, it, you know, I think it's because of that, Joe, what we've seen, even now, in this time, you know, of challenge, we've seen new businesses move into Manor Royal. And, you know, those people who've got the will, and those people who've got the, the capital, I suppose, in a way, are seeing an opportunity in Manor Royal right now that they wouldn't normally get. And just in the last maybe three or four weeks, we've seen something like 22 acres of land sold to for um, future development so you know in concluding that i'd say it's right now a really exciting time to be in crawley it's a really exciting time to be in manor Royal, and it's it's set fair for a really really positive future i think joe well thanks thanks very much steve um i, I shall now know exactly where i need to go every time i want to fly a plane and eat a pie <laughs> um, you have, however, segued us beautifully onto our next speaker because you talked about that 22 acres of space that's recently getting that level of inquiry. And I think there's this perception that thanks to COVID, the office market is not what it used to be. But 
that perception is that it's not as good as it used to be. I think it may just be different. So I'm going to go down to, to, to Adam now and say, Adam, can you come in and give us a, a view of how employers are looking at workspace, workplace requirements as a, as a result of the pandemic? Um, I know you're a particularly agile organisation yourself. So how have inquiries changed um, over the past couple of months? Um, well, they have actually begun to reappear, um, which is the encouraging thing, because on March the 23rd, not surprisingly, as everyone was sent home, our phones stopped ringing. Uh, apart from people ringing our IT department saying, how do I operate Zoom or Teams? Uh, um, but, but we have begun to see a, a return to inquiry levels and transaction office transactions have occurred. Uh, and if anyone uh, on this webinar thinks that the future of the office environment is dead, they're totally wrong. Um, it's absolutely not dead. And I think that, that you know, a big part of what we want out of our workplaces that collaboration and sharing of ideas which happens extremely well inside uh, an office building and is very difficult when you're you're sitting in a bedroom or on a dining room table uh, and and I think and people are beginning to realize that and coming back in in spades uh, and um, I can give you a, a really um, example Example of the strength of the market. It's it's as I say it's obviously reached a wobble, but uh, um, but but matters have have begun to slowly improve. Um, I had three viewings yesterday on a building, funny enough, on Manor Royal from three separate companies, uh, all interested in taking space. Uh, and and so the we've heard about the, um, the 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 unemployment rate rising a little bit that Clem had very. Uh, uh, clearly annotated and Joe picking up your point earlier on of Crawley being fully fully employed and in the past that has been a very definite barrier to companies wanting to relocate into the town thinking why should I go into a town where I can't find staff well the answer is now is your opportunity to do that uh, uh, um, there is no doubt uh, about the range and quality of product that, that the town has on offer for employment space um, with its very much it's all business capital hat on which hopefully has been demonstrated by Clem and, and Steve uh, you know particularly with the two percent of the land mass 26 percent of GDP it's a real powerhouse of, of business and jobs 101,000 people working in a, in a town that's a massive big number um, and with that comes a, a good choice uh, of buildings and and we have seen uh, and continue to see companies relocating from the region into Crawley taking advantage of the fact that the buildings that they need for their businesses are here in our town uh, and if that's not enough it actually is very good value for money in regional terms uh, when you look at, uh, at the at the M25 towns uh, and even going far south uh, into the south coast in Brighton if I tell you that that you can get a, a an office building in Crawley cheaper than you can get in Brighton. I, I suspect a lot of you here would be quite surprised for me to hear it, but please don't tell my Brighton colleagues uh, that I'm selling Crawley as the place to be. Um, <clears throat> I've only been here since 1991, so I'm beginning to get to know the market quite well here, but it, it, it's, um, uh, you know, the fundamentals of the location haven't changed. Well connected, great rail services to London, an international airport on our doorstep. And just to give you an overview of how employment has changed, uh, currently there's 18% of the workforce are directly um, employed in the uh, aviation sector. Um, 25 years ago, that 18% was near a 30%. So that has shown where the growth has been. Uh, we're not a one horse town when it comes to um, a particular sector is a massively important part and we're very proud and grateful to have uh, a great airport on our doorstep there's no doubt it's a placemaker and it and it brings people in but it shows that it, it that the growth you know companies are here for a variety of reasons uh, and that infrastructure and connectivity hasn't changed um, uh, um, it, throughout this pandemic that's still there but what we have got is a good level of workforce and a fantastic choice of buildings. I'm probably overstated my three minutes. Sorry. 
<laughs> Thank, thanks very much, Adam. You've, you've given us a really nice overview of some of the benefits that Crawley offers. Um, and actually, it's quite encouraging, I think, to hear about that diversity of employment, um, which will enable it to become more resilient in the current times. It also takes us very nicely to Graham, who is um, an example of a company that has recently chosen to come to Crawley and has managed to navigate the challenges of that relocation during COVID-19, which I think is, is a seriously impressive achievement. So Graham, why, what attracted you to Crawley and why do you think other people will think of it as such a powerful choice for their company's location? Well, you're very correct, Jill. It was a, a huge decision for us to um, make the commitment, but we were confident enough in both in our business and the growth of the business and in making Crawley our new home to invest in the region, not just for a period of seven months, but for, for seven years is the length, length of time we've committed and invested to this, um, to this region for. And, and why Crawley? Um, to be honest, after 18 years, we'd really outgrown our previous home in, in Hawley. And when we were casting our net around to look at alternative venues, um, we considered um, a number of factors. We obviously had to think about our current staff and where they might prefer to be, but also where would be the best place to attract future staff. And we're realistic enough to know that we're not going to get people coming from London to come and join us, or even maybe people on the South Coast, though we do have some people come up from Brighton on a daily basis. But Crawley's brilliantly located as a catchment area to get people in from, from Horsham, from Red Hill, from Three Bridges, and obviously, of course, from, from Crawley itself. So we're looking to grow um, quite heavily. And we think it's a, an ideal place to be located for that. Um, in terms of why other people should look towards it, I think a lot of this is, is being covered off um, because it's, it is so well located. If I look out my office window, I can see uh, the train station and the bus station as well. Um, Claremont, the council was kind enough to give us some uh, designated parking areas which enables our staff to, to drive in if they want to and I personally cycle in and it's a very nice cycle route so um, you know our staff have the options as to how to get into work and, and that kind of works for everyone as well um, and as I say because we're in it for the long term we think that um, as, as a location not just because of the transport networks but also because of the range of bars restaurants and place for 130 plus people, which is what we've got coming into this office now, uh, living and working in, in Crawley, um, is, is great to have that, those options for when they go out at night as well. So bring more money into the region that way. That's lovely. Thanks, thanks very much, Graham. And I just speak out to our attendees now. I'm going to have a, put a few questions to Lynn in just a moment. But while I'm doing that, we're about to open this to our general Q&A. So it'd be really great if you could think of some of the questions you would like to ask this panel. And if you would kindly pop those in the Q&A, um, so I'll be able to see them all and answer them directly, ask them directly to the panel. If you would like to use the technology to its fullest extent and verbally ask your question, please can you wave a hand virtually and I will spot you and I will be able to bring you in so you can ask your question live to the panel. So while you're all thinking of some really tough questions for our panel, I'm just going to turn to, to Lynn and I'm going to say, if we've got anybody listening who's interested in moving to the borough, what do you think is the big sell? Okay, thank you, Joe. I mean, it's, it's difficult because I think everybody who's spoken before me has stolen the thunder, quite frankly. Um, but I think it's fair to say, I hope that what you've heard um, has demonstrated why Crawley is the, the boom town that you referred to, Joe. Um, and economic powerhouse is another uh, description that is often used when describing Crawley. Um, I think somebody asked me the other day um, for my reflections on the past six months uh, working in economic development in the town that, as Clem pointed out, was, uh, was cited in one report as the, the hardest um, hit by COVID. Um, and when I thought about, obviously, huge amounts of hard work, um, and realigning priorities and focusing on recovery work. But for me, the strength has been absolutely in our partnership working. 
as a local authority, we can't do this on our own. And I hope you can see again from the, the people on the panel and who we've referred to, um, we really do have a strong proven track record of working in partnership with a range of partners. Um, and uh, I think that's a real strength of Crawley, the partnership working. Steve referred to the community feel. And I think that is true in every sense of the word. Um, when you come to Crawley, we are small in geographic area, but uh, we welcome you with open arms. Um, and there's a huge amount to offer. Um, you've heard the benefits. Accessibility obviously is key. Um, I'm bound to say this, but I do genuinely believe we are an outward looking and um, open council. Um, so please, if anybody out there is thinking and wants um, thinking about moving to Crawley and wants to know more, um, please get in touch. Um, there are a range of opportunities, um, occupier opportunities, development opportunities um, in the town. Uh, we do have um, a dedicated inward investment website called investcrawley.co.uk. I would encourage anybody to take a look at that. Um, it has an interactive development map on there, so you can you can pick your pick your place of interest and, and drill down to individual sites to see what's available. Um, we have a range of um, really fantastic commercial property agents specializing in various sectors across the, across the town. Um, Adam obviously being one of them. So do reach out, do get in touch. Um, but yeah, as I was said, I, I hope this has presented the, uh, the fantastic opportunity that is in Crawley. Please come. <laughs> yes, builders and we will come. Um, yes. <laughs> So actually, that has actually listed beautifully, I think, between all of you, the, the USPs that, that Crawley has um, from that infrastructure that's not just vital for business, but also for attracting talent and making it easy for talent to get to the area um, down to its actually quite nice community feel and to its many other benefits. Just before, while I'm waiting for a few more questions to come in, I can see I've got four or five already. I wanted to tackle um, not just the opportunities, but the challenges. So I wanted to look at the Gatwick challenge um, and I was going to ask the question, really, and I'm going to open it up to say, obviously, the impact of COVID on Gatwick has been severe. And it's actually really pleasing to me to hear that there's less reliance on um, aviation for employment than there used to be. But what are the plans um, to keep Crawley buzzing and what are the plans going forward? I know that in our pre-chat, Steve touched on those a bit. So I'm going to go over to him and say, can you let us know what the plans are? Um, to keep Crawley where it is. Oh yeah, thanks. Thanks for the easy one, Joe. Um, <clears throat> I think the important thing to say about the airport, though, is um, the airport is obviously really important to our local economy, and you know, that's been that's obvious and been referred to. You know, Gatwick are in a difficult place now, as the whole aviation sector is, and and they're not the only um, sector that's struggling, and that's that's a nationwide thing. But um, thinking about Crawley and Gatwick. Um, you've got a, an airport uh, operator there who still remain committed to the town and committed to building a fantastic airport. It's already a fantastic airport, but they still have those medium to long term plans to expand and grow. Um, and and uh, Gatwick has been through difficult times before. It's going through them now. It will come back. This is a major global international airport, Joe. It ain't going anywhere. Uh, it might take three or four years, but it will be back and it will be a driver for the economy again. Absolutely 100%. Uh, no question about that. In the meantime, in the meantime, yeah, it's difficult. But hey, some parts of our economy are actually doing okay, and they're 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 working well, and they're they're kind of hot. What I would say right now is um, all those opportunities that Clem talked about, all that investment, it's come at the right time. So what we're doing right now, collectively as partners, is laying the foundation for the next evolution of a great Crawley. And that's why I think with all that money coming in, all that investment, now is the right time. And it's not just me saying this. I mean, Adam's referred to interest he had just today, but people are investing in Crawley. They don't spend money in a town buying big sites if they don't think this town is gonna to go places. So that's a really good message to send out there, Joe. Thanks very much. I have faith. I have covered Gatwick and indeed I admit the Heathrow second runway debate for getting on for 25 to 30 years and I know that the demand is there and that it will come back um, and there will probably be an enormous pent-up demand once everybody is allowed um, or is able um, to indulge in international travel again and international business. Would anyone else like to come on to this before I go on to some of the audience questions? Yeah, Clem. 
I'd just like to add that um, through the Town Investment Plan and the Crawley Growth Programme and the Get Britain Building Programme that Crawley's been able to access, that's over £100 million of mainly public funding investment which is going into Crawley right now um, and that that investment is not only helping to unlock private sector sites to come forward to be to be built out but it's also creating jobs and um, opportunities for our local people so it has a key role to play in responding to the, the crisis that the challenge that the crisis presents us by offering alternative employment. And that's why working with um, Job Centre Plus locally, we have set up um, an employ Crawley service to help um, enable people being made redundant to access jobs being created by that investment. And we can also offer Employ Crawley and our partnership with DWP as a mechanism for helping recruit people locally in the area. And it's quite, it's quite clear there's a lot of talent becoming available as a result of the crisis, which presents an opportunity um, for business to recruit some really, really good talent that's now become available, which previously um, was obviously working in, in particular functions within, for example, the aviation industry. Yeah, it's always been a, a good place for, for high tech skills, hasn't it? Um, I'm going to actually go on to ask you about what the investment uh, was. How does the regeneration program strengthen the nighttime economy? But I'm going to actually put that with a question I've just had in from a member of the audience that says we have, I'm going to read this one out. We have a major retail investment in a number of retail units in a prime location in the town centre. Do you feel sorry for us or are we going to come out OK? Not at all. I, d I don't feel so. I think medium to long term, the picture is looking extre extremely positive for Crawley. In terms of our town centre regeneration programme, what we have enabled is the ongoing development of our new town centre neighbourhood. Now, if that, that's going to accommodate 3,000 homes. That's a significant influx of people into the town centre over and above the fact that as a regional shopping centre area, it also has a significant gravitational pull for um, people in not just Crawley's neighbourhoods, but beyond Crawley's boundaries. When you combine that with the fact that we've got a significant professional services business cluster within um, Crawley Town Centre, um, and that cluster is also going to benefit from the ongoing investment that's happening in commercial space grade A investment, that all of that is going to help to continue to attract and sustain and grow footfall levels um, going forward. So I would say it, it's a fantastically rosy future for the retail sector in Crawley. We, we need to get through this, this current crisis, but there is a bright future outside of that. And the fact that we're seeing live investment happening at the moment, the fact that we're seeing that continuing ongoing investment is demonstrable evidence that um, that, that, that future is achievable. Thanks very much. Um, I have a question here, which I'm going to start by, by putting to, to Adam, actually. Um, and I promise faithfully not to tell your partners in other areas what your answer is. The question is, what is Crawley's biggest competitor as a business base? And why would you say Crawley is more attractive? That's a really good question. Um, I, I would answer it by saying there isn't one. Um, because our, our fundamentals are so strong. Um, uh, certainly it is very much the business capital of Sussex. It's a massive powerhouse, as we've heard. Um, it also has you know, fantastic immunity on the doorstep for um, staff, but also for residents as well. Uh, and um, the, the, with it, we have got a very forward looking and accessible uh, council and that's always been the case and that's very important we've also got steve sawyer who is our not so secret weapon on manor royal uh, uh, a very unique set of uh, uh, passionate individuals that are accessible to encourage businesses uh, into the area and that's massively important uh, because of that um, <clears throat> we you know, Brighton has a different set of circumstances and a different set of matrices to Crawley. Greater Rygate has similar ones. But in so in regional terms, we are probably considered to be a an M25 town with a unique uh, uh, set of circumstances that includes an international airport. 
So um, that's why I would say uh, on the strict proviso that none of my fellow other eight office partners know about this, um, there, there is no competition. Why aren't you here? <laughs> Thanks very much, Adam. I have a question here which I'm going to go to Graham for because I think uh, he's our representative at the sharp end having just moved to Crawley um, and it says that the question I've really got here is how has Covid affected your business plans? Has it actually impacted? Is it good? Is it bad? Does it prevent opportunity as well as challenges and how have you adapted? Um, and it would be really interesting to hear that from somebody who's really seen it at the sharp end. Well, there is there's plenty of doom and gloom out there, but there are a lot of good news stories as well. And um, when you're in the recruitment business in the pharmaceutical and life science sector, like we are, uh, we're actually seeing very robust levels of, of growth. And that's why we're looking to increase aggressively our, our headcount here in Crawley um, and in our other offices across the world as well. So... Um, Covid is is yes an awful situation for a lot for a lot of people, but it it does on the other side present opportunities for some types of business, and obviously the types of firms that we're dealing with are at the cutting edge of technology to try and find vaccines to bring cures not just for Covid but for a lot of other very serious diseases around the world. So um, yeah, we we see we see opportunities, um, and we we don't want to shy away from from being positive, I think it's important to get some positivity out there when so much of the media these days is, is solely focused on the negative stories. So um, yeah, we're, we're here, we're recruiting, we're looking to get good people in from, from crawling the surrounding areas and um, the, the future's very bright for us and for a lot of other businesses. Thanks very much. Adam, did I see you wave that you wanted to come in on that one? No, I, I was just waving goodbye to a builder who I've been waiting to come and give a quote to, to be honest. Um, so uh, he's gone now. OK, well, I'm actually going to move on to a particularly interesting question that, I, that I've had. Um, I've had a couple of questions that move us away from aviation and took a look about the other sector strengths in the area. And obviously there's a number of strengths in the area from med tech through, through to the stuff that supports other industries. Um, particularly interesting question here is, though, about green technology. Um, so I'm just going to read this one out. What plans are there to take advantage of green technologies, both from the perspective of improving um, sustainability locally, but also by being a leader in this area, the economic benefit to the town? So what is Crawley's potential to be a leader in what I'm going to call that clean growth economy, where tech is helping us get to those carbon net zero targets? Uh, now, who would like to give me a wave to answer on this one? Lynn, I've not heard from you. Would you like to come in on this one? You're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I'm probably not best place to answer this one. Um, as Clem mentioned, the, the town's fund, um, the town investment plan that we have submitted to government does include um, a, a significant strand on the whole green technology um, basis. And the council did sign a climate emergency um, last year so it is it is top in our list of priorities um claire i don't know if you can add if you want yeah, to add to that our intention is particularly to take advantage of the fact that there's so much demand uh, for um, construction activity at the moment that we're going to harness that in terms of um, the development of green, green construction skills. So we're talking closely with the college about enrolling out new programs of green construction skills training. And in addition to that, so that's what we're going to help facilitate through the town investment plan. And alongside that, we're going to provide a significant amount of resource to invest in green homes retrofitting. Um, and when you combine that with the workforce skills programs that we'll be looking at, there's a fantastic opportunity for Crawley to, to develop further its, um, its expertise and its business base in the area of green construction skills. And bearing in mind the, the huge levels of investment we've got coming down the tracks, this is an opportunity to link that to and then harness that for Crawley to steal a march in relation to green construction skills. Alongside that, we're putting, we're enabling major investment as I've as I've outlined before in sustainable transport infrastructure. 
So we don't see each project as being self-standing. We see each project as being part of a the fabric of a fantastically joined up network of sustainable transport infrastructure, whether it be the new bus station, whether it be the new railway station investment at Crawley at Three Bridges at Gatwick, whether it be a network of new off-road cycle routes that allow commuters to get from one economic centre to another, so from Gatwick Airport to the town centre to Manor Royal, whether it be investment in new pedestrian cycle routes, but also our EV charging network infrastructure rollout that we're working together with West Sussex County Council on. All of that investment um, being put in a coordinated way, I think is going to transform uh, Crawley and put Crawley at the forefront of the green transformation. Thanks very much. I was gonna go over to Steve because I've got a, a lot of questions about uh, clusters and what other clusters Crawley has strengths in. And I think you could probably give us quite a good rundown on those. Sure. I mean, just to, just to pick up a little bit on that last question as well about the, the green tech sustainable. I think Crawley's been leading the way a little bit uh, already on, on this area. And there's a lot of talk in big cities across the globe about the 15 minute city, the, an idea that came out of Paris uh, and it's been catching fire. And I think Crawley, with its um, neighbourhood plan kind of set up, is already a 15 minute city. That's right. So the foundations are really, really good for taking advantage of the way places, the major cities in this world are going. Crawley is well placed to do that. And um, active travel, um, we've been promoting that for years. I mean, if you come to Manor Royal, you'll get discounts on public transport through the Manor Royal bid. So you can get discounts to travel actively in Manor Royal, to Manor Royal and around Manor Royal and around the town. So lots of stuff going on around that. Also, very interestingly, 9 million square feet of commercial floor space. That's not quite because some of there are multiple floors, but that's a lot of roof space, right? So something really interesting is happening in, in Manor Royal and is that the businesses of Manor Royal are coming together and to look at how they can innovate in terms of generating their own energy on site and to have a decentralized energy, energy company where they can share and generate their own energy from sustainable. So this is not being done in many places and, and, and Manor Royal is the living lab for um, this country to look at how we can achieve that in Manor Royal. So breaking real, some real interesting new ground uh, in that area. And it's going to be so important going forward, as well as investment in the public realm and the spaces and everything else. Very quickly, there are some sectors that are doing really well. Graham's talked about the medical sector, but clearly there's lots of logistics on Manor Royal. So they are doing really, really well. We've had um, companies, um, sign companies are doing really well, unbelievably. Um, you wouldn't maybe expect that even against the backdrop of um, some less positive news about car sales. I go around looking at talking to the car sales uh, companies in Manor Royal and commercial van sales, and they've all kind of done blindingly well on hitting their targets. Not to the point where, Joe, is that we've got car sales who are, are growing in Manor Royal, and one of them is going to really big names going to move into Manor Royal onto a, one of our vacant sites. We ain't going to be vacant much longer. So lots of good news around Manor Royal on that one and Crawley generally. Well, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm hoping some of those, those, those new players are going to be some of the electric car manufacturers as well. Um, I'm going to ask a very specific question now, and I think this one is, is really for Clem that's come in. Um, you, you talked earlier about some of the work that's taking place around the Crawley station. Um, and the, answer, the question I've got here is the arrival experience via the station could do with a lift. What's happening with the redevelopment of Overline House and the plans for the station? So a very quick update again yeah there's a there's an outline outline planning commission's been secured for a new railway station complex and over 300 new homes on that site it's going to reserve matters to going to planning committee uh, in november december um, it's a 70 million pound investment in that new station complex um, and the developer wants to be on site as soon as possible to deliver that so we completely agree that that gateway needs to be transformed and that is what we intend to do in partnership with the developer and with the county council and to invest in the public surrounding public realm including a transformed bus station complex thanks very much i've got um, more questions from the audience than we're actually going to have time to answer so what i'm going to say is keep asking them because if we don't get time to cover them today, we will send them around afterwards so everybody who's attended will get um, responses to their questions. I have one last one from the audience, however, which I am going to ask, and I think probably 
Uh, Clem will have the joy of answering this one as well, although other, other comments are welcome. It says it's good to see the homes plan in the town centre, but it may not be enough. There are more jobs than residents, so more homes locally would help young people stay in the town and workers to make more sustainable travel choices. Obviously, it says, Crawley has no land left. So what partnership working, what can you do with the surrounding districts to ease the problem? Okay, so we are working very closely with surrounding districts. So we are part of a sub-region called the Gatwick Diamond. Um, and we are rest assured that we are in, um, we are in detailed conversations with neighbouring authorities about how to ensure that we can continue to meet Crawley's housing needs. Yes, it's absolutely fair to say that the housing need figure that I mentioned earlier, I think over 11,000 cannot be met within Crawley's boundaries. We are reliant on cooperation with, um, with neighbouring authorities. We are adhering to the duty to cooperate principle and there will be um, results coming out, um, fruits from that com those conversations coming forward. Um, at this stage, um, not yet ready to materialise, but um, we're hopeful that there'll be both uh, opportunities for residential and commercial um, in through that cooperation as a result of that cooperation. Well, thank you very much. We're coming up uh, towards the end of this. So I've just got one question which I would like you all to answer, which is talking about um, the biggest driver. So if I just ask you to each of you to finish off, I'll just go around you in turn. I'm afraid I'll go around in order that's on my screen, which I appreciate is not the same order that's on everybody else's screen. But I'll just want to go around and ask each of you in turn, what, what do you think is the biggest driver uh, for Crawley's continued growth and recovery? Um, so can I just start with, with Graham? Is that okay to start with you with Graham? What do you think is the biggest driver to keep Crawley as a main choice um, for companies like yourself? I think we're, we're a people business, so um, the, the people in Crawley and the surrounding areas itself will be the, the main drivers for me. The, the more successful um, individuals can be if they're offered opportunities like our business can offer them, um, then the better Crawley will do the domino effect of people being in employment and uh, spending their money in, in Crawley will help, help the area uh, in the future. So pe people for me. Okay, thanks very much. Lynn, do you want to follow on on that one? Yes, of course, yeah. I think at the risk of repetition, I think for me, it's the strength in partnership. Um, it's very easy to talk about partners, and yes, we all like to work with each other, don't we? But I think in the last six months in particular, now I've worked for the council for nearly 20 years, but I've never seen um, the, the strength in partnership um, quite like it as I have in the last six months with everybody genuinely coming together recognizing that so many people have and and still are in some cases going through a really difficult time um, but there is that commitment that passion and that determination to get through this and we will so I believe that's a strong driver for this. Thank you very much Adam what's your view what's what do you think is the biggest driver for, for Crawley to continue to grow? I think it's it's its ability for regeneration uh, and making things happen, um, and that hasn't changed. And and actually, this current position that we're in has probably enhanced the um, speeding up of that ability through the partnership that Lynn has referred to. Thank you very much, Clem. What's your view on that one? Similar to Adam, I think if we're talking about the ability to grow economically, I think critical to that is the ongoing investment in modern commercial space. Um, we need to ensure that we have sufficient quantum of that coming forward and there is a pipeline of opportunities coming forward. We need to get rid of the old stock, which is outdated. It's a case of some of it being the wrong type of supply. So we will, that is critical to the future. The town, the council is leading by example on that. It's 78,000 square feet of grade A commercial space that we are building out now which will be ready for ready to uh, move into um, in early 2022. So um, just a plug that if anyone's interested, then do contact us because that will be available in the not very, very far away distant future. Thank you very much. And finally, Steve, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Joe. A bit like uh, Graham and Lynn, really. I mean, for me, I'm a firm believer it's all about people. And people, to me, they make places. And what's great about Crawley is that it punches way above its weight 
but it's of a certain size so that you're, um, you won't be anonymous. You'll be a personality in Crawley. And um, for me, if you move to Crawley, you'll find you're surrounded by a lot of motivated, really supportive people who really genuinely want to help. And if you move into, into Crawley, uh, what you'll find is that you become a part of the community. So for me, a bit like Graham and, and, and Lynn right here is it's all about people. Well, thank you very much. I heartily agree with you. My memory of working and, and living in the Crawley area was that it was very much a people place and that it had a fantastic community once you, you got below that surface and everybody was amazingly supportive and helpful. Um, and it's been lovely to hear the passion that has come through on that side of people and community and talent, um, which Crawley has in addition to all of those other hygiene factors about connectivity and infrastructure um, and its new gigabit investment and its commercial office space um, and everything else. The one thing that I'm really going to hold, I think, from this conversation uh, as we draw to a close is that Crawley, Crawley was always a new town. It was always a cutting edge modern new town. And as we go into the, century, the coming century, it was lovely to hear that it will become probably a model for being one of those 15 minute cities. Uh, I shall very much look forward to seeing that and to enjoying it. So thank you very much to my panel. Thank you very much to everybody who asked a question. I will now hand back to my colleague, Bonnie, to close us down. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Joe. Um, echoing Joe's thanks, thank you to the panel and for, to Invest Crawley and the programmes partners for bringing this session together. Um, it's always great to hear such an optimistic session and love the fact about the um, you won't be an anonymous person in Crawley. That's a great way to epitomise the place. And yeah, it was a really great session and good to bring this message out as part of this Real Estate Live platform. Um, just for a bit of an update on what else is happening as part of Real Estate Live, um, we are finishing for the day now, but tomorrow we've got uh, three more sessions taking place, one on steering growth in the southwest, one on the regeneration of the seaside towns across the UK, and one of the future of the high street. So some big topics will be discussed for a Friday, um, and hopefully some of you will be able to join us for some of those. Um, all the details are on the Real Estate Live website, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you all again for being with us. Oh,